We have featured only one other German-Austrian serial killer, Martha Merrick. She was a poisoner who even poisoned her own husband and children. If you have never read The Poisoner's Handbook, I can't recommend it enough. It discusses the start of forensics that made it possible for murderers to be caught using science. Before that, poisoning was common. There are killers out there that we will never know about because they got away with it. Poisoning was common in estate and money disputes. However, this was usually poisoning a person or two. Some people would poison multiple people like Martha Merrick. Another, who is also a German female killer, is Geish Gottfried, who we will speak about in this episode. In 1785, Geish Margrethe Tim was born in the German city Bremen. Not much is known about her mother, but her father was a tailor. When she became a young adult, Geish wanted to be an actress in the theater. She was a pretty woman, so there was a chance she could have made it. Therefore, Geish started taking singing and dancing lessons. While Geish was working hard to get ready to start in the theater, her father decided to arrange her marriage. He was a saddler named Johann Middelberg. A saddler is a profession of making saddles for those who didn't know like me. He wasn't very supportive, so he destroyed her dreams of acting in the theater. They would go on to have three children. Johan would spend his money and time getting drunk and visiting brothels. His pastime caused him to dwindle all of their money. He finally told Gage that they had no money, and that is when Johan started getting sick. He started vomiting, having bouts of diarrhea, and becoming extremely thirsty. Gage's mother had placed poison in the attic to get rid of some mice. Gage took that and put it in her husband's breakfast. Not long after, in October 1813, Johann Middelberg died. A year later, in a span of two months, Gage lost her parents and two of her children. She first murdered her mother. Gage would say about poisoning her mother, While I'm canning the poison, God gives me a hearty loud laugh that I was frightened of myself at first. But immediately I remembered... God would give me this, as proof that my mother will soon be in heaven, will laugh. Gage would then murder her two daughters. When they died, she went after her father, who would die after eating some soup. No one suspected Gage. Instead, she was praised. Everyone admired her strength and ability to keep going after losing her husband, children, and parents. They started calling her the Angel of Bremen. A third child, a son, and her brother would also pass away. Gage would say about her son's death, Why I let this boy live longer than the others, I do not know. At this time, she met wine merchant Michael Christoph Gottfried, where Gage became Gage Gottfried as we know her today. He seemed to be a good man and was her support during the death of her child. However, it didn't seem that that was good enough for her. In July 1817, Michael Christoph Gottfried passed away. For years, Gage remained alone and enjoyed the money from her second husband that had, he had left her. But in 1823, Paul Thomas Zimmerman, who was her neighbor, proposed to her. They didn't get married, but Paul seems to have still added her to his will. And in the will, he had left her his home. After a while, Paul Thomas Zimmerman also died. Gage seemed to have been a fashionista and loved dressing in fashionable dresses while living good life now that she had the money from her second husband and the house that her fiancé had left her. Greed seems to be the top reason women become killers, and even though Gage was living a comfortable life, she seems to have wanted more, and she started spending and spending and spending to the point that people started knocking on her door wanting payment. This is when friends and acquaintances also started getting sick and dying. In 1827, Geisha's neighbor, Johann Rumpf, came over to have dinner with her. When she served him a salad, Johann noticed some weird white grains on the leaves. He noticed it, but still ate it. He got sick, but he did not put two and two together. It wasn't until he came over again for dinner that he noticed the ham Geisha served had the same substance. He asked her what it was, and she said that it was just part of the condiments. So when she wasn't looking, Johan took a sample and had a doctor analyze it. The doctor was able to identify the white grains as arsenic. The grains were also oily, so it was called mouse butter. I googled it because I have never heard of mouse butter, and it seems to be a poison that they mix with peanut butter, and people still use it today. And that is how she seems to have killed the other people, is using the same substance. 
Johan and the doctor went to the police. When Gage found out that she was about to be caught, she fled to another city called Hanover. She was still eventually caught, and in March 1828, she was arrested. During the trial, it was found that Gage poisoned over 15 people, and she was sentenced to death. She remained locked up for three years, where Gage said that she saw her dead family. Maybe it was guilt or sadness that she got caught. I did find some accounts where they said that she felt she felt guilty, but um, that was only like probably like one or two, so I'm not 100% sure about that. Three years on April 21st, 1831, she was led to the guillotine, where she was executed in front of 35,000 people. Gage was another greedy female killer featured in the podcast. I would also consider her a family annihilator, being that she basically annihilated her entire family. I always find it fascinating how people don't suspect a person when people are dying around them. But we have to remember that the people had a short lifespan during that time and there was disease and other things that were happening during that time. So that's probably why people didn't suspect her. Today at Spitstone, called a Spuck Stein, is in the town square where Gage Gottfried met the guillotine. Gage Gottfried had a death mask made that is used to study the facial patterns of women who have committed a crime. I never thought that facial patterns would be the same for killers, like they would have the same patterns and it would be different than someone who doesn't murder, but if anyone knows more about this practice, please let me know. But it was fascinating to know that she used the same poison, which is the mouse butter, which is um, the peanut butter mixed with arsenic to murder her entire family and to murder her three children and her parents and two husbands, a brother and her fiance. I was just shocked that she was able to get away with it. Thanks again for watching the video. If you like the content, please consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell, and also sharing it with someone. I will talk to you next week.